Imagine the story of an incredible SGA president, a person who tirelessly works as an ambassador for the university, a person whose goal is serving both the student body and the administration, a person that would stop at nothing to ensure that student needs are met. Now imagine that the same dynamic leader decided to take a stand, a stance against blatant racism, a stance against injustice, and a stand for the greater good of the student population. Ah, but there's a twist. Instead of the university making the changes advocated by that leader, or honoring the leader for his transformational leadership style, the university decides that this forward-thinking change is just too dangerous for their comfortable everyday way of life. They decide to make the leader a martyr, a sacrificial lamb, to show students what would happen if they tried to change the system. What if I told you that the university that we're talking about is South Carolina State? The person that we're talking about is 1955-56 SJ President Fred Henderson Moore. During the aftermath of the 1954 historic Brown versus Board of Education case, the landmark case which declared segregation in schools to be unconstitutional, certain southern communities were not so apt to change. One of the communities that did not heed the court order was Orangeburg, South Carolina. Like many other southern towns, they refused to integrate. African American community leaders were outraged by this blatant display of racism. One leader NAACP President James Sultan Sr. started a petition in which various African American community leaders took a stance against this injustice. As a result of this petition, many of the men and women who signed lost their jobs. If they owned businesses, distributors refused to distribute products to their business. They lost their livelihoods as a result of this petition. One of the men who led the action against the blacks of the community was Orangeburg's mayor, Clyde Fair. Fair was also the chief operator for several businesses in the Orangeburg area. Those businesses included Sunbeam Bakery and the local Coca-Cola plant. One of Fair's major clients was then South Carolina State. This Cecil Williams photo shows Fair denying blacks entry into a church. NAACP President James Salton Sr. approached South Carolina State's SGA President Fred Moore the then charismatic Charleston native about the situation. Salton wanted to make Moore and the other students of South Carolina State aware that the same person who provided them food services led the racial discrimination efforts in the community of Orangeburg. Naturally, this outraged Moore and his fellow students, and although they could have boycotted immediately, the students decided to follow protocol. They took this matter to the university president, Benner C. Turner, Turner told Moore, South Carolina State should not get involved with community affairs. Turner's advice was controversial because according to recorded historical accounts, he was known to lean to the opinions of an all-white board of trustees and opposed to the needs of his student body. Despite the order of the president not to get involved, Moore would not allow fellow African Americans in the community to suffer as they sat idly by. Moore, along with others, organized a boycott of South Carolina State's dining hall. Moore convinced a large group of students who had little to no discretionary income to go on a mass boycott of the cafeteria in order to send a message to Clyde Fair and the community of Orangeburg that they were against the racist actions of the community. The students felt that it was important to hit the vendors in the pocket where it counted. As a result of Fred Moore's action, as the leader of this protest, he was unfairly expelled by an all-white Board of Trustees less than a month prior to his graduation date. He was expelled April 15, 1956, and to this date, Fred Moore has never received a degree from South Carolina State. What is Fred Moore doing today? We would not be 100% truthful if we told you that Fred Moore went on to live a life of bliss and success. After Fred Moore was expelled, University officials at Allen University saw fit to grant him a degree. Moore later went on to receive a Juris Doctorate in Law from Howard University School of Law in 1960. Moore then began practicing law in Charleston, South Carolina. After a result of a very controversial decision in which Moore was cited by the Honorable Justice Ernest Finney 
for not representing a client to his fullest ability, Moore received a temporary suspension. Moore also has fell victim to several health-related problems, including a full stroke. Moore is now an ordained minister and a seminary professor, and he currently lives in the Somerville, South Carolina area. We took this story to several current students, and we asked them what would be their response if they were expelled from school less than a month prior to their graduation for doing something positive. South Carolina State University has made an effort to try to amend its relationship with Fred Moore in the 1956 class. During the 2006 Founders Day celebration, during a program entitled Honoring Our Heroes, South Carolina State presented Fred Moore and his class with an official recognition letter. However, Fred Moore still has never received a degree from South Carolina State University. I'm very upset that all my hard work would be basically thrown down the drain. My immediate reaction would be very disgruntled. I would be very upset because I've come all this far. It's not easy to get through four years and be told right at the finish line, you can't graduate. So I would be very, very upset and very hurt. And honestly, I don't know how I would react. Call every congressman, call the president, everybody I could think of with power to get myself across the stage. Uh, I would be extremely upset that all the hard work that I did was kind of in vain. What do you think South Carolina State should do for Fred Moore? Um, definitely there should be some type of either let him finish his last couple of minutes, maybe take the last credit over or something, but it was he was basically finished. I believe that he should not only earn his degree, but also be given some type of monument or something for the students to remember for his hard work and dedication that he fought for. What fueled student interest in Fred Moore? Well, one was the play, Taking a Stand, which told the story of the Orangeburg Freedom Movement, which started off with a story about Fred Moore. The university should give Fred Moore an honorary degree. Uh, 15 days before your graduation, you get expelled for doing what's right. Um, I think that it's it doesn't even look right for the university. I think that the university should uh, present him with an honorary degree. He's done a lot for our community, done a lot for our school, um, and he embodies what uh, an SC State student, student should be like. We should take a stand and uh, fight for what we, what we believe in and uh, be more like Fred Moore. So I think by giving him an honorary degree, um, you're embracing you're embracing what he stood for and you're also um, honoring him because he deserves it. The next factor that led to student involvement was a plea made by Davidia Thomas, editor of the Collegian SC State student newspaper, to do more for Fred Moore. Davidia, what does it feel like to start a movement of young individuals advocating for Fred Moore? Well, I think it's only, only necessary. I mean, Fred Moore has done so much for us that we would never be able to start to repay him for what he and the others who worked with him have done. So I think it's just a small contribution that I'm making for someone who's made such a huge contribution. What do you think the university should do since Fred Moore has never received a degree, even 54 years after this terrible ruling? I think Fred Moore and others like him, John Struman, the Orangeburg Seven, they've done so much for the city of Orangeburg and the city itself owes them a huge debt of gratitude. South Carolina State University has benefited so much from their efforts and we need to ensure that these people are recognized, Fred Moore in particular, and others like him, John Struman, the Orangeburg Seven. They've done so much for the city of Orangeburg and the city itself owes them a huge debt of gratitude. South Carolina State University has benefited so much from their efforts and we need to ensure that these people are recognized, Fred Moore in particular, who has never received a degree from the institution that he worked so hard for. It's, it's really, really appalling and we should really do something immediately about that. This action led to a current student petition in which over 10% of the current South Carolina State student population signed so that 1956 SGA President Fred Moore would be able to receive an honorary degree at this year's graduation.